welcome back. My name is Catherine, and today we're going to look at some old code of mine back from 2015, so six years ago. This was one of the first projects I built while I was in school. This is something that was not a follow along tutorial or an assignment where I just copied something I found online. This was an actual project built from original ideas, which is kind of rare in computer science. So I thought I'd walk through it. This program, it's on GitHub if you wanna check it out. GitHub, place to host your code, place to put your code and share it with others, but here it is. Is, and let's take a look at the video. It was a meteor shower game, so you had this spaceship and you could shoot lasers at meteors. Pretty basic game. And you could change your spaceship to be blue or red, and you'd want to hit the blue meteors with the blue lasers, or the blue spaceship, and then the red meteors with the red spaceship. And then sometimes you'd get into this like super round where you got more points for each meteor you hit. And so this is like a bonus round. And then you'd go back to the main round, and it would say like, if you hit like so many in a row, you'd get access to that bonus round. There's a score, there were lives, there were lasers, there were different things that existed. And so here we are, main branch. At this point, I didn't think I knew about, I mean, I knew GitHub, but I didn't understand branching or why you would work on something on a feature branch and then merge it in and all of that good stuff. So I'm pretty sure I just committed everything directly to master. And this is actually from 2014, but I think I made some changes to it later on to like get it ready for recruiters to look at. Yeah, those commit messages, beautiful. In here, we also have a DS store. And so typically you would put this file, the DS store, you would add that into here. So let's just, let's improve this a little bit. So we'll add, DS store. That would be something you'd want to add in here so that that DS store file doesn't get saved to GitHub. So we could go and do that. And the reason it knows not to commit or save those files to this online platform is because of this special file name, the git ignore. These are the files we want git to ignore. Uh, we won't make the change though, but that's something you could do. Another thing is like this gameplay video, the game manual, the console. These are things that should probably live in a Google Drive somewhere or a Dropbox or a Microsoft OneDrive or something like that. GitHub is mainly for code and so anything that's related to the project but maybe not the code of the project should probably live somewhere else. There could also be a website that hosts all of this stuff so you could create a simple one pager, put the video on there, put the game manual, put the console, that might have been a nice improvement there. But the fact that there is a readme is nice, but the readme doesn't really talk about the game at all. So we change that so that the game manual, maybe that content is in this readme. But let's take a look at the code. That's what we came here for. And so this was built in NetBeans. I don't use NetBeans anymore, I use IntelliJ, but we're just gonna take a look at it on here using GitHub. Lots of files, probably could have organized this a little better. Lives, there's an attribute that's lives, there are these constructors, there are methods, and probably should have made this private. Right now it has no access modifier. So now anyone could create a lives instance and do dot life and set it to whatever they want. Maybe not ideal. Looks like we're using some library here with the world image. We can see those imports at the top. Some kind of Java library. Looks like an external package, but it's actually really good that like lives, like you'd think a number of lives, oh, that can just be an integer. But when we make it a class, we can add Add these things like subtract life, game over. We can add these methods that we can associate with a lives instance. Let's look at some of these other ones. So here we are, we have this explosion. Look, we're using interfaces. This should probably be public. All of these should probably be private. Not sure what height M and width M, that's for the meteor. So the height and the width of the meteor that the explosion is going to be at, but the idea of using abbreviations is like kind of not great with a beginner program, like unless it's something like IN for inches or something that's commonly known, then maybe it's okay to use an abbreviation, but I would say for the most part, don't use abbreviation. This should be written out as like with meteor height, meteor or meteor height, meteor width, whatever. This looks like an interface, collidable. If something is collidable, then it needs to have a width and a height to collide with something. It needs to collide with something and yeah. 
It needs, you need to be able to calculate the distance from that thing to another thing. This looks good. Here's another thing with the abbreviations. I think this was like, there was regular mode and this was like the bonus mode and I called it HM. This should probably be written out as hyper mode, I think, maybe. Oh, looks like we have a custom data structure as well. All of these should probably be private. All of these constructors, it's a lot. Instead of using the constructors, what we probably could have done is use the builder pattern. So you essentially add this app builder annotation to your class and then just add in each item that you want to set a value for. So I wanna set the name foo, I wanna set the ID one. We could have done something similar for these constructors so that we could take out all of this code, just use app builder and then individually set the meteors, the lasers, etc. There's like a lot going on in this class. A lot, like half the things are commented out. Not good. Usually like it's in theory fine to do something like this if the code is local to your computer, but if you're posting it on GitHub or something, it should probably be cleaned up or thrown in another branch that's not the master branch. This is something I used to do a lot when I was first starting out is I would comment every single line. We're drawing a plane, we're drawing a meteor. I remember doing one of those hacker ring challenges and literally commenting every single line of code in it and like submitting it and thinking like, they're gonna totally hire me. I know what my code's doing. I explained every line of my code in these comments. In reality, you should very rarely use comments. Like comments should explain something that's weird about your code. So the fact like, why 55 to 40? Like why is that the new position to put the score image? So maybe we would add a comment here saying like, this position is the top left corner. Or our code could be self-documenting and we could have these as enums where it's like score start position and then in a different file actually set that value for score start position at 55. So make it kind of not an enum, but like a static variable. It's instead of hard coding it here, you could do something like that. Yeah, again, why, like what happened, like where does it get drawn then if it's not drawn here? <laughs> Missing meteor image, what is that? Lots of hard coded things, lots of like random things going on in this class. Like this contains the main logic of the class and sure it's drawing all these things, but I would parse this out into separate classes because there's just a lot going on here. These should also probably be static um, or be like variables instead of having it hard coded here. Cause if like, let's say I draw the dark heart five times throughout my code base. There are different ways we can draw it. There are certain ways we can make it appear, disappear. And I'm referencing this name. If I make it a variable, then it would be much easier to just change it and change it in one place rather than all these other places throughout my code. So it looked like the other one handled the logic of what is a game and this file actually starts and ends a game. So so we have the idea of a big bang, which launches this canvas thing, as well as, oh, nope, I guess we don't end the game. Oh, here we go, make image. So like the idea that this is called make image, I'm pretty sure this is like overwriting something, but it's really hard to say like what type of image is that? And if you look at the text, you can see it says space bar two, start playing, game over. It's clear that this is the start or the end of a new game. Like if we're in a new game, do this, otherwise do this. But the fact that this is just called make image, we need a better name. Oh, but here at least we're using finally an access modifier. Very exciting. Let's look at our tests. Here, we have 60 tests that happen. This is really interesting because this program is fairly graphical and meaning it's displaying graphics on the screen. You have all these different things. Instead of doing unit tests, I think I tested the whole thing together in one big integration test. I say, press a random button and that random button, there's a method somewhere that that goes to. Let's see, ooh, look at GitHub improving. Like I can use it like an IDE. Okay, here we have a random key generator and it either does up, down, right, left, S or D. And I think S and D were to change the color was of the spaceship. And based on that value, we would do an on tick 
key event and it would verify, verify invariance, so I don't even know what that means. Um, and it would verify that the constructor works. Like if it's the valid key, we shoot the laser. This is one way to test, but it's like there's so many things you could forget to test. Like if you add a new feature, you could very easily forget to add it into this. Yeah, we need some unit tests added into this. And when we say unit tests, we mean tests that are testing, ideally, the individual file. So a file that's a live test file, it individually tests that feature. And then we have a different one that's like individually testing the explosion one. This thing just tests everything at once, which is a good test to have, but things can fall through the cracks as you add them. You might forget to modify this file. It's also not very organized in that they, these are a bunch of random features that you're testing, but how do you know all your features are tested? So I would definitely want to break that up into some more tests. But this one's good, testing that we can move the plane left and right right and left and if we hit that edge then we throw that exception so there are some tests in here but it's not like testing every method it's testing these random features that exist that's our code review thank you so much for watching if you want me to review your code post it down below it could be a single java file it could be a full-on application ideally it doesn't have so much code that it's overwhelming maybe pick a few files that together are a thousand two thousand lines post them down below make sure they're in Java because that's what I know how to code and I'll see you next time happy coding